Hi, my name is Paul Church from Clarity Stamp here in the UK. Today I'm going to be working with our beautiful designer 12x12 papers. We've got four different designs in the collection. We've got our beautiful Northern Lights. Let's just have a quick flick through at some of the designs you've got in there. So in each of our designer pads, you're going to get 12 different designs and you're going to get four sheets of each. And what you'll notice is that on one side, you've got a really nice, vibrant, bold design. And then on the reverse, you've got a more softer, muted tone. So these are great for scrapbooking. They're great for matting and layering. But one of the great things I love about these is they're perfect for luxury inserts and also making envelopes. So that's what I'm going to show you today. But let's have a quick look at all the others. So that was Northern Lights. Then we have Indian Summer, one of my favourite ones. Um, again, 12 different designs, all created by the lovely Barbara Gray. Um, and you're going to get four sheets of each. So that means because you're going to get four of each, you can use three of them and then keep one just to... New paper smells lovely. And then to stroke because we know we love doing that with our papers don't we so the next one is rainbow river really nice bright and bold colorways in this one um and yeah it's so difficult to choose favorites i know when we launched these i had to choose one from each and it it took me longer to work out which one to choose than it did to actually display them and then finally we've got the lovely shenandoah beautiful scenery in this one um, created specifically um, for that. So we have them available in the lovely 12x12 which I'm going to be using today but we also have them as 8x8s, we've got them as 8x8 parchment and we've also got them as 5x7 card toppers. So look, all these beautiful colours. I'm going to stop now because I'm going to end up, yeah, right stop. So let's put them to one side. So when I talk about inserts, what do I mean by inserts? Normally when we're making a card, we concentrate on the front, but sometimes we forget that when the recipient receives it, it's the inside that counts as much. So when we brought out our fresh cut aperture dies, we was using our eight by eight papers to put behind it. Um, and that was lovely, but it also meant that you could either put the, you'd have to cut an eight by eight down to the size of your card blank and you'd either stick it behind the aperture or you would have to stick it on the inside of the card. So now with the 12x12s, what that means is that you can create inserts for 4x4s, 5x5s and 6x6. And let me show you what I mean. I've already cut out um, the beautiful town die and you obviously can't see it very well on this. So what I'm gonna do, I took because you're going to get four sheets of each design, I took one set out of all four of them and I trimmed them down to six by 12 and then folded them in half. And what that means is that I've now got my inserts ready for my six by six card blanks. So let's have a look and see what they look like behind. So if I pop this one in here, and we put that down there. So this one is using the beautiful soft tones. And then when I open the card, the way in which it works, I've then got a beautiful colourway on the inside. Now if you think, well, oh, it's a bit too bold on the inside, then I've taken the same piece, so this is the other half of it, but I folded it in the opposite direction. So what that means is I've then got different colourways in order to put on the, behind my background, fact, that works perfectly. Um, and then when you open it up, you get the more softer tone. So again, if you was worried that with your writing or whatever, but that for me just finishes it off. So let's just have a couple of the others. I'm gonna go with this one, so I'm gonna put this to one side so I don't forget it. So again, we've got a selection of the different backing papers, but you'll notice how it just changes when you change the background behind it. And again, when you open it up, you've got that more vibrant design on the inside. But this is one of my favorite ones. It works so beautiful. And again, we open it up and you've got that soft tones. But I could turn it the other way and have the, so it looks as if the sun's coming up above the, the townhouses. And then when I open that up on the inside, there we go. 
you've got that beautiful, for me, if you're sending your cards, or even if you're sending them to friends and family, having an insert like this adds that touch of luxury. And if you are selling, it also means that you can charge that a little bit more. Okay, so where do we start? So first of all, what I wanna do is create my card blank, because what I'm gonna do is then show you how you can make a matching envelope using the same papers. So let's pop this to one side. And although I've got one cut out, I'm just gonna show you how quick and easy it is to use our aperture dies to do the cutting. So I've got my clear plate, I'm using the Gemini. I've got my clear plate, cutting plate at the bottom, and then the lovely Dee Paramore gave us a tip about using these document pockets, which you can get in all good cheap stationers. Um, and what that does, it does two things for me. One, it makes the plates last longer. And two, if you're cutting with black cardstock, what can happen is that the fibers can get embedded within the plate. So then you use a white piece of card on top and sometimes those fibers can transfer. So this is great for helping to protect your plate. Next, I'm gonna bring in the lovely town aperture. This is one of my favorites. Um, when you look at it, I'm just gonna cut it exactly how it comes. But when you look at the design, you can actually cut some of the houses away or you can single out houses. And that's one of the great things with our dies is that when you look at them, there's so much more to them. So I'm gonna take one of our six by six card blanks. I'm gonna use the black one. And then I'm gonna put the die face down on top of the card blank. So we'll just position that until you're happy. I've taken a piece of low tack tape just to hold that in place. Then I'm gonna bring in my flosted, my flosted plate, my magnetic shim, and then another cutting mat. Now all of our dies work in all leading die cutting machines and so all it will be will just be the different combination of plates in order to do the cutting. So we're just gonna run that through the machine now. Okay, so now we've got the reveal. So I'm gonna open up my plates. I'm gonna carefully remove my low tack tape. And what I love about this is the magic. This is my little waste bin, is that the die just pulls away easily, okay? And then all I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take my tool in one, because there's loads of little windows in this, this tool in one's great for just running over the back of the die and getting all the pieces out. All of our dies have a special coating on, um, but you can see how quick and easy that is. There's not a piece left in there. And there's so much fine detail. I'm gonna pop that to one side. I'm now gonna bring my die cut into play. I'm just gonna pop that down there. And sometimes I find if you just do this in the tray, it just helps those bits fall out. And then just on the little windows, all I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna use the other end. They're not stuck in, they're just being held in place. I mean, I could take the runner and run the brush over it, but it's quite therapeutic just pushing these little bits out. There we go, all cut out nice and easily. So what I wanna do now, sometimes with a detailed die, um, the pressure when it goes through the machine um, can cause it to buckle slightly. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take some copy paper, let's remove that from there, just take some copy paper, and what I'm gonna do is just put a couple of sheets on the bottom. I don't know if you can see, can you see on the, overhead mode, see how it's sort of bouncy where it's gone a little bit buckled. So all I'm gonna do is now treat the die cutting machine as the mangle, and we're gonna run it back through just to flatten it. So it's the same combination, it's just that I've taken out the plastic sheet and just put paper in. Okay, so now we've got our car blank and it's nice and completely flat. So let's pop this to one side. Okay, so earlier on when we was looking at the various backgrounds, I decided I was gonna go with this one because I think this one works really well because you've got that blue sky in the background. So what I wanna do now is put my verse inside. 
So I'm going to use some of our word chains. We've got loads of lovely word chains on the website. And I've got a selection here. So let's say I'm going to go with your the best. You can tell I had that plan, can't you? Because I didn't lined up on the back. So what I'm going to do now is I've already pre-mounted my stamps. Now, because I've already folded this, what you'll find is that the paper can sort of just raise a bit. So when you come to stamp, the stamp's gonna reach the paper before it hits the flat surface. So I'm just gonna take some low tack tape. I'm just gonna detack it a little bit more, just to hold it completely flat to stop it moving around. Okay, and then we'll ink up. I'm going to go with your, and what I love about this funky font is that you can put it at an angle and it will still look fantastic. So we've got your, the, best. And we'll go. Okay, <clears throat> there we go, perfect. So what you can do, you can have a, if you're selling your cards or if you're just spending an afternoon batch making, then you could have a, a series of these ready. So you could just have happy birthday, you could have best wishes and have these so that when you come to make your card, your insert's already done. So pop that to one side. So now we bring the card blank back into play. So it's already pre-scored, but because it's gone through the mangle, um, it's just flattened that crease. So I'm just gonna use my bone folder just to reintroduce that crease. Okay, and then what I'm gonna do, where I've got my crease down the middle, is I'm gonna run my tape runner over both sides so that it forms either side. Then I'm gonna take my card and I'm just gonna push into that crease, press down. So that now gives me the front of my card. And so now when I open the front, you now get that professional finish of the insert on the inside. So now that we've made this beautiful card, now I want to show you how you can make an envelope. Okay, so from the 12 by 12s, I've worked out that I can make an envelope for a seven by seven card blank, a six by six card blank, and a five by five card blank. And underneath this video, you'll find some downloads. And what I've done, I've given you the measurements of the paper, where you need to mark, and how you need to score it. Um, but because they're not ready yet at the time of filming, I've got my little crib sheet here that tells me for a six by six card blank, I need a piece of paper that measures 10 by 10. And then I'm gonna score at four and a half inches and five and a half inches. So that may sound a bit sort of gobbledygook to you, so let me explain. You've got options. You can use a scoreboard or you can use a ruler um, and an embossing tool. So I'm gonna do both of them just to show you exactly how you can do it if you've got one or the other. So what I wanna do first, I've chosen a piece of the same 12 by 12, and I'm gonna cut that down to a 10 inch square. So I'm gonna have a look at this, I'm gonna bring in my paper trimmer, and then I'm gonna trim that down so that I've got a 10 inch square. Okay. Now the pieces that have fallen away, keep those, because they're perfect for like stamping on and bits and pieces. So I'm gonna bring in my scoreboard. There's loads of different scoreboards on the market. Um, this is one that I've used for years and years and years. It's got inches on one side and centimeters on the other. And what you'll notice is that what I've done is during the, in the middle, I've put a black line in. And you'll see why that's important. So um, if you have got a scoreboard and you haven't got a a line down the middle, you may think, oh, that's a good idea. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take the 
12 by 12. Now, this is where I decide whether I want the softer side on the outside or whether I want the more vibrant side on the outside. I think I'm gonna go for the more vibrant side. So I'm lining it up, I'm gonna take a pen, and what I'm gonna do is mark at four and a half inches with a pen, I mean you could do it with a pencil, and also at five and a half inches. And I'm gonna do that on all four sides. So four and a half and five and a half. So now what I wanna do is do the scoring. So what, this is, see for me, this is where the, the line comes into play. Because what I wanna do, I wanna score from the four and a half on this side to the five and a half on that side. But because of the way in which it, it the paper's position, it's quite difficult to see where this, if I was doing it over here, whether I've gone straight or not. So I, I've got nowhere as my guide, whereas if I line that up on the black mark there, then I know if I bring this bottom line down onto that one, I know that when I score, it's gonna be in the straight position. So we're just gonna line that up and we're gonna score. Okay, then you're gonna turn it round and you're gonna go from the four and a half to the five and a half again. And you can repeat this and do this on all four sides. So I'm gonna pop that scoreboard to one side now because it's done its job. And then all you're gonna do is fold inwards, all four sides. So I'm gonna give it a nice crisp score with my bone folder. So now what I'm gonna do is I can now bring in my two sides. But what I wanna do is bring the two sides in first and then bring that one up and it gives me that perfect envelope, okay? So what I wanna do now is just tape this down. So I'm not worried about that bit there. All I wanna do is put tape along those two edges. So you can choose a wet glue if you want to. Fold that in and that is now my envelope. So when I turn it over, I think I said at the beginning I was gonna go for the more vibrant side, didn't I? Hey ho. But that's what it looks like. So now I can take my card. You have to rewind and see what I said. I can't remember now. So now my card fits perfectly in my envelope. And there we go. So if you used to get that through the door, that's the first card that you're gonna open. So let me just show you some others. So this is the six by six. Then I've got my five by five. And again, I mean, I haven't got an actual card there, but that's a five by five card blank. So that fits in perfectly. Then I've got my seven by seven. So again, it just looks completely different depending on the paper you use. So there's those two there. So this is the card we've just made. So we've now got the matching envelope that ties in perfectly with that. And here's some that I made previously. So this is a townhouse die again. So I've got the lovely envelope with the matching insert. And then this is my favorite one. This is the treescape die. So really nice and vibrant. I used the more bolder side on that one. And then there we go, ray of sunshine. So that's how you make it using a scoreboard. So let me explain and show you, if you don't have a scoreboard, how it's just as easy to make. So let's pop those to one side. So I've already cut the piece down. So this time I'm gonna go, <coughs> excuse me, with the vibrant side on the outside. So I've cut it down to 10 by 10, and then I'm gonna take my ruler, and then what I'm gonna do is I just need to mark those same points, exactly as we did on the scoreboard, at four and a half and five and a half. And we're gonna repeat that process round all four sides. Mm -hmm. 
And then all I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna take my groovy tool or any embossing tool, number two, and I'm just gonna use the edge of my ruler and I'm just gonna score those lines. Now you don't really need to have a, a soft surface underneath. I've got my craft mat underneath because there's enough give in the paper to do the scoring. So you're gonna repeat the process exactly as we did on the scoreboard by going from the four and a half up to the five and a half. And as I explained, there is a download available at the bottom um, where you can print off and keep those on a file. So we'll just score those lines. Quick and easy to do. It really, really is. And again, once you've made a couple of these, they're just so quick. Okay, so I've done my scoring. So I'm just gonna repeat the process by folding in, bone folder. Always open up the, the folds so that you get a nice crisp line. And then we'll repeat all four sides. And then we're gonna come in from the side, that to the top, or do we wanna go that side and that side and that side, or do we wanna go that side, that side and that side? I'm gonna go with that one, I think. No, I want that as the top, so I'm gonna turn it around that way. So again, just a bit of tape, just on the edge there and then fold that into place. So that's now stuck down. Turn that over, and we've now got our envelope, so I can take my card that I just made, and then that is gonna fit perfectly. And you'll see, when I, there we go, so that's the, the envelope. But if I take the card out and lay that on top, you'll see that there's enough space in that envelope if you've got some decoupage on there or you've got some embellishments to be able to take that. So I hope you've enjoyed today's tutorial. I've really enjoyed working with these 12 by 12s and sort of coming up with different ideas um, and making a beautiful insert and then the matching envelope for me just adds that finishing touch. So if you've liked today's tutorial, then please feel free to leave a comment below. Um, like and subscribe if you're not really already a subscriber to the channel. Barbara blogs every single day and all the information is at the bottom. And if you've liked what I've used, then check out our website, um, which is www.is at the bottom, claritystamp.com. Thanks for joining me and I hope to see you again soon. Take care, bye bye.